Welcome back, I'm Mr. Chernak. We're gonna do a full tune-up. And full, I mean more just than changing the oil. We are gonna change the oil. It's due, and this is a 2015 Ford Focus with a two liter. It requires synthetic oil, so we got some synthetic oil. We've got a new filter. And we've covered this in another video, so we're gonna skip over that today. Um, we haven't shown air filter replacement, so we're gonna show that today. Uh, this one's kind of unique. It looks like something out of a tractor. Um, the other one was quite dirty. So we put a light inside or we hold it up against the light of the sun to see if we can see through it. The old one you'll see when it comes out was marginal. We're going to do uh, this as well. Not expensive. We've got spark plugs. So a full tune-up for me is we change the plugs. Just over 100,000 kilometers and it's time. So it's a four-cylinder. We bought four spark plugs and they are iridium. So they're pre-gapped. We just make sure we don't drop them. Do not drop the plugs. We hit the bench or the floor, they're going to lose their gap. So these are pre-gapped, they're ready to go. I'm just going to put a little anti-seize -E on the threads and torque them with my uh, torque wrench. We've already looked up the torque, it's 11 foot pounds. Okay, so these are going to go in. I'll show you how to get those out first. They go in easy. And remember, when we install them, not even, don't even drop them in the hole because they'll, they'll close. So I'll show you how to put them in without knocking the gap closed. Um, I've already changed the cabin air filter. I had a situation where it was our first warm day yesterday and the air conditioning was okay. The airflow was not great. And as the uh, day wore on, got kind of midpoint in the afternoon where it was its hottest, I really didn't have any airflow and hardly anything coming out. I could hear the fan turning, but I wasn't feeling any cold air. So I uh, was able to borrow a torque screwdriver and get the old one out at the car quest and there it was, it was dirty. And the uh, evaporator had um, frozen up due to lack of airflow. So I uh, turned on the heat and thawed that out, got a new uh, cabin air filter and uh, put it in and it works fine. My airflow came back big time, airflow on my face, airflow on my feet on the windshield was great and uh, I put the heater on first to thaw out the frozen part and then once it was thawed um, I turned on the air conditioning it was beautiful and it was perfect today when I drove in so $15 part lucky I caught it I was uh, hoping it wasn't anything to do with the heating or air conditioning um, or the blend doors it was just a plug filter so if you got poor performance on your um, your vents, not a lot of air, even though you're on max, you can hear the motor going, but you're not getting a lot of air out of it, or your air conditioning kind of was working and then it conked out, you got no airflow at all, check this. Uh, these typically we access them, passenger footwell, either lower the glove box completely, you gotta get tip right out of its hole, it'll be there, or uh, underneath, mine was underneath. So you would probably want to use the computer if you can't find it right away won't be in the owner's manual. It will be in some sort of repair information. Uh, take a look at uh, the internet or your information source and see where this is hiding. There are There is instructions inside. I don't know if this one actually said where it was. Warning! Under the glove compartments. Degree, okay. Quantity of parts, one. Degree of difficulty, easy. Estimated time, 18 minutes. This is very thorough, actually. So actually, read the instructions that come with your filter. This tells you exactly it's hiding below the glove box, and you will need a Torx bit screwdriver to pop it out, and then your fingers remove the screw. So this is good. I didn't read those, it would have helped. But I did see there was a screw holding it. And I could see once I pulled it out, it was very plugged. So we're gonna recycle this box. Okay, when we come back, we're gonna, we'll do the air filter first. And then we'll move on to the uh, spark plugs. Okay, we're back. We've got the air filters here. If you don't know where it is on the car, you can see where the uh, air comes into the uh, throttle body. This is the air filters here. This is the fuses. This is just the battery cover. This is our air box. So you can see here we've got uh, four little eight mil. Screws. I don't think these are going to come out all the way. That's good. 
then we'll drop them on the floor. Make sure they're out spinning freely. Might need an extension as in here. There's a cover and the screws. You have to make sure it's actually engaged correctly or you'll just bend things and it won't be sealed up. We'll just set that over there. Here's our old filter. It comes out really nice. It's a little dirty. It could have gone a little longer, but we're doing full tune-up here. I can... Mm, no, I can't see a lot of light through that. So we're going to change this one for this one. So it's not just the color, it's the dirtiness. And there's got a lot of dust in here. So we're going to put this guy in. So with this one here, we have to make sure it's this engages uh, in this groove. Oh, right there, actually, there's a notch there. So we make sure that engages. And this groove so we get the cover on. So this goes on first. Okay, we're back. Um, I checked it. This one seemed just a smidge longer, but uh, in the end, what I did was I just applied force lower, and there's a bit of a tapered slide on the bottom. As soon as I caught that, it forced it in. So it's a nice tight fit. Down here on the bottom, I can see we're got this this edge here in the housing, which is fine. We have to be in the housing. We'll never get the cover on, so that's in there nicely. The original filter had this a little alignment tab that actually fell into that plastic wedge groove. The new one didn't have it, so it's in there. It doesn't really matter which way this is orientated. I guess this is the way they built them in the factory. Let's see here. Yeah, Fomoco. So this is Ford. This is just a CarQuest filter uh, without the little tab. So it's in there. It's in there nice. I like it. So let's see if we get the cover on with no more drama. And this should just engage so this nice groove and this will engage hopefully over the back of the filter right here is where this will rest here to close the cavity the actual filter here this plastic cap completes the air box so let's see this on line up our tabs
this to snap in first. screws out here. Make sure I'm not prying against them. Trying to line up in the holes. Oh, take them right off. I had to. Okay. I think it's just going to be a snug fit. start it and then use the screws to draw the covering because there's a good chance your tabs are not lined up and you're not in the groove. This one here I just by hand got it to finally snap. There's a lot of force on that gasket at that end. But I can see we're down and the screws now will start. So yeah, never use the screws to draw the covering. It should all just now start quite nicely. They're just in the plastic, right? There we go. Crazy, you just snug. You go too far, you just pull the threads out. So that's it. That's closed. That's closed. That's tight. Feels good. Nice little corner. change. Um, most cars have a flat style filter. You pop a couple clips, it comes out, goes in really easy. They made this more of a challenge, but I can tell it has a lot of surface area. So it's probably a well-engineered well filter. Mostly I see these round filters and tractors and stuff. So um, different design, but we got it. It's okay. So uh, first part of our tune-up, changing air filter, done. Okay, now to the uh, next step of our tune-up here, we're going to take off these coil packs, unplug these connectors, and install four spark plugs. So the first thing probably, most electrical have a little bit of a locking tab. Pull back these little plastic thingies, and hopefully we squeeze, oh, there they go. Yeah, they just come off. You can't really mix them up like the old days with the spark plug wires, so short, you literally go into number one. And how do you know who's number one? The, the, where the belts are? Number one. So one, two, three, four. Cylinder one, two, three, four. Might not be the firing order, but that is the number of the cylinder. So one, two, three, four. So we've got off of our electrical connection, off of our coil packs. We're gonna take off our little bolts. And if we're lucky, a little twisty. There's our coil pack. So this is really cool. This is the coil and the lead and the oh, that's nice and clean uh, cover all in one. So this is modern. This is coil over plug. So we don't have uh, plug wires for the long ones running all over the engine to a distributor. It's all here. The ECU grounds out the coil pack to fire the spark plug. So very elegant way of doing it. A lot less things to go wrong. More accurate timing because the triggering mechanism is right on top, so this is COP, coil on plug. I'm just going to proceed to remove them all. Does it matter which coil goes where? No? I mean, if you're diagnosing a misfire, I would, you know, mark them one, two, three, four, but this car does not have a misfire. We 
just going to take these out and change the spark plugs. Okay. Again, we keep our bolts and our parts handy. This has got a, got a nice little tray there, built right in. I appreciate that. These, when they go in, they're just stuck. Just keeps them from backing out. oil, oil on the tip or oil on the plug, you need to replace your valve cover because not only is there a gasket around the outside, each hole has an o-ring to keep the, um, the oil in, inside the valve cover. So when that gives up, that o-ring uh, fills the hole and could cause a spark plug not to fire and will contaminate this with oil. Okay, so you want the spark to travel all the way down onto the tip of the spark plug. Inside the engine, looks like this. There's a little spring inside there, and that's it. It rests there. That spring makes a connection. So we don't want the spark to come out, and that can happen with either a material failure or a oil contamination. The spark will go sideways, not come to the end. So there we go. We've got our coil, we've got our little tube connection, and our spark plug. This would be in the head. This would be inside the cylinder cavity to fire off the mixture. Okay, so there we go. Make sure you don't lose the little spring inside. You'll have a misfire. These are in there, they're not falling out. Okay, so everything looks really good here. No oil contamination. So I'm gonna I'm gonna prep the spark plugs by putting some anti-seas on them and I'll be back. Okay, we've got our spark plug socket. They're unique because they have a little rubber uh, boot inside to hold the plug. You got a wrench head here if you lose, you know, working on a motorcycle and you can't get onto the top, you can use a wrench. Turn the side. We've got three eighths ratchet with an extension. Is it deep enough? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna loosen these off. These look worn. They're not terrible, but the gap is huge. Compare that with the gap of the new one. You can see, maybe you can see, um, the metal is worn off the tip. So the electrode's good, but that uh, ground hook there is worn, and this one's definitely thicker. And they're not too expensive. So we're gonna change them, and our timing should improve. So should our fuel economy. Yeah, that is quite worn. It's been in there for 110,000 kilometers, so. Let's see, is it Ford? Ta-da! Oh, there's our boot. Oh, yeah, there it is. It is a Ford spark plug, so it's original. We are putting in some auto lights, which I think is Ford anyway. But anyway, uh, that it, there we go. So we had an original Ford air filter we changed. We had a Ford spark plug, which we're changing. So I'm gonna just go ahead and remove the others, but you can see how I got it out. And I have to put this little protector back in my thing there. But yeah. Ford out, auto light in. Okay, we've got the four Ford plugs out. I've got my auto light Iridium XPs ready to go here. But I never put plug, plugs in dry. So people have different opinions about that. But I have had too many that did not want to come out or broke. So I like to put just a little bit of this. Just on the threads, nowhere else. They've had really good luck getting them back out. But remember, this is a steel plug and aluminum head. Most cylinder heads are aluminum. I know I've had a few break offs, especially when I used to have my own Volkswagen dune buggy. Youch, they did not want to come out. It's kind of a. created a lot more work for me if they broke off. So I'm just going to put a thin coat on all four. 
start them by hand, of course, so we don't cross them. If you're not putting any of this on the electrode, just on the thread. So I put the new plug in the socket here. You just gently hold it. You start here, this one. Down. You go by hand. Run it in. Here it is. Back it out. Still got my rubber. Plug started. Not torque, but I'll come back and torque those. So I'm going to just start all those by hand, finger tight, and then come back and torque them spec. So I'm setting my torque wrench. This one calls for 11 foot pounds. This thing only goes down to, let's see here, 20, 18, 16. So close. I think I'll be fine. So this is as low as this will go. I'm just going to go in there. I took the little rubber boot out of the socket. So the hole. Okay. There it is. Okay. It's one. Done. Careful. Don't be rough with it. You'll crack the porcelain on that spark plug and then we'll have a misfire. So there we go. All done. All set. Porcelain this part here this is a porcelain insulator if you crack this the spark will take its shortest path the path to ground sideways instead of out at the end and we will have a misfire so we don't want to introduce a misfire by being rough with the insulation cracking the porcelain so just be careful the socket has that rubber boot in there I took it out to torque it so the boot wouldn't get caught in the hole because it likes to come out of my socket um, I just go very gently on, torque, and out. Okay, so and make sure you're straight on. You know, when you're putting your spark plug socket on, make sure you're straight on, not sideways or cockeyed or leaning on the extension. You'll crack that ink if you're leaning on it. So just be straight on, both in installation and removal. Okay, uh, we're gonna come back and put on our coil packs. Okay, we're ready to install our coil packs. I Cleaned up the bolts that hold them in, put a little anti-seize on the thread. Got this handy dandy magnetic tray, so I drop them. Keeps them clean as well. So we've got our coil packs. I cleaned up here where they fit onto the plug. What I like to do is put a little dielectric grease right here where they go over the plug. And by little, I mean a little, just a little here. Swoosh it around here. Just keeps it from getting stuck on there. Okay, it won't interfere with the electrical connection. Just will let us get that off uh, quite easily in the future. So we got a little bit of there smeared around. Okay, I guess we'll start at the end. Just goes down. Okay, and then we put a bolt in. done. I'm going to proceed to do exactly the same thing I just did three more times. So I finished installing all four coil packs, uh, snugged up each of the four bolts that hold the coil pack on, connected all four and engaged the safety catch. And uh, it's done. Let's see if it runs.
and there we go. It runs just fine. There's no miss, there's no shakes, fired up right away. Benefits of doing this, improved uh, fuel mileage, reduced emissions, smoother running engine. Um, for all of this, both spark plugs and for the uh, air filter, and the air filter's plug, the uh, engine tends to run uh, rich. It can't get enough air, especially in a carbureted situation, so we don't have any restrictions in the air filter. So we're good, we've got a brand new air filter, it's a brand new plug, should start well, run well, cruise well, you get great, great gas mileage. And actually, quite easily with this work here, uh, another 100,000 kilometers uh, smooth sailing. All right then, I'm gonna wrap up this tune-up. I am gonna change the oil, but I've shown you that before, so that just uh, wraps up this tune-up on this 2015 Ford Focus. Happy motoring.